Hello Rocket fans and welcome back to the Copenhagen Suborbitals Rocket Shop where we continue working on the world's only crewed crowdfunded space rocket speaker. Today is December 21st and it's time for some rocket updates. So last week we released a video on machining these tiny RCS nozzles which will hopefully get us some real world data that will help us in the design of an actual vacuum optimized RCS thruster system for the speaker rocket and today I thought I would show you a nice comparison between these tiny nozzles and an actual one-to-one -one scale diameter speaker rocket which has uh, a vacuum optimized nozzle so you can actually see the difference in expansion ratio between a uh, uh, vacuum optimized nozzle and these tiny RCS thrusters which we test at sea level and now that we have a lot of these made it's time to measure them and that's exactly what Adrian was doing this weekend. To begin with the idea was to take a few of his handmade nozzles with different chamber diameters to see how the difference affects the pressure drop to the throat and next in line was comparing the temperature difference of the expanding gas at different starting pressures. Here Adrian pressurized his tank slightly above his desired starting pressure, then the valve was programmed to open once the pressure reached the set point by slowly leaking out of the system. He also measured thrusters with various expansion ratios to see if he can actually read the difference in thrust from his data. All this went well into the night, so I didn't manage to capture all of the tests, but later Adrian also compared virtually exact thrusters to one another as well as the same ones after mounting and unmounting them to see how much spread is actually introduced from run to run into the data. Finally finishing the night with different throat sizes for different thrust levels. Now everyone else that day were probably doing the last of their Christmas shopping, so there wasn't much going on in the workshop. But Martin came for a while to work on one of the bearings for the astronaut seat, which will allow for movement at the hip and knee joints for the astronaut to get himself into a cannonball position during flight and better keep blood around his vital organs during acceleration and descent. If it's too big or no, this might work. Might absolutely work. Nice. Bigger holes. <laughs>
That is all for now, so as always, thank you for watching, supporting and subscribing, and if you don't want to miss any of our future updates, make sure to ring that notification bell, so we can see you next time when we're one step closer to space. Copenhagen Suborbitals is a non-profit all-volunteer project. The reason we're getting so close to reaching space on our Spica rocket is because all of our crowdfunding supporters. If you've been following this project and feel passionate about new ways of exploring space and building rockets, you can help us out by going over to our website www.copsub.com and becoming a supporter with a small monthly or one-time donation that helps us pay workshop rent and buy materials. And in return you get all these videos on building a space program which you don't really get anywhere else. So on behalf of everybody at Copenhagen Suborbitals, thank you for your support and we'll see you next time.